It's Nate and Eric. We're talking to musicians and music adjacent people about the worst shit show they've ever been a part of. These are the stories that you don't get to hear. This is what we call shit show. Check, hey, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, oh, hey, yeah, hey, ha, yeah, ho, ho, yeah, ho, 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 yeah, hey, yeah, yeah. hey. What is going on, everybody? You're listening to Shit Show. How have you been? What's new? Ah, oh, shit, man. Just working my day job. Uh, it's not so bad right now, but, uh, you know, we've been booking a couple shows and uh, going to be going out in April. Very fucking excited about that. Get out on the road, play some shows. And by the time that this podcast comes out, our first single from the new record that we recorded with Nick Raskill Lennox will uh, be out. Will be out. Yeah, that's Plane Crash. We really want to know what you guys think about it and hope you're stoked. Um, first off, I want to apologize for me being unable to put these out as frequently as I would like. I think that lately I've been extremely overwhelmed. Uh, Eric and I did a country record, and uh, here's a little bit of what that sounds like. Every part. That hopefully will be out this year. Uh, I did an 80s record. There's no way of knowing that it wasn't true. It was still alive. Yes, I'm Doesn't seem to matter much now that I am. To- and then just been fucking busy as hell, just getting in the whale stuff together, making new art. We got a new shirt that'll be coming out. Hopefully you'll be able to see that relatively soon. Yes, sir. We're making uh, pin packs. We're making stickers. Getting merch together for, for to start playing shows again. Yeah, so, we're really yeah. stoked. Um, things have been kicking off, as you, as you guys probably already have seen, that um, shows have been coming back pretty strong and full force, and we're stoked about that. But also kind of like maybe complacent with being happy. <laughs> <laughs> Like I like my couch, man. It's Dude, nice. <laughs> like <laughs> the older I've g- like as a when we started this band, I was like for sure I'm just gonna live out of a suitcase. <laughs> I'm not gonna ever have a home. I'll have a PO box and that'll be it. But <laughs> the reality of being an adult and also like having things, you like to have things and nice things. You got to put yeah, them man. somewhere, right? Yep. So it's kind of like well, I guess. You can't do what I was thinking, and also living out of a suitcase kind of sucks. Fucking sucks. Yeah, it's it's not a, it's not ideal. It's not how people should live, really. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, some people love to be like transient and like yeah. live that like van life kind of yeah, a deal. Yeah, I think that life is for some people, and not for I think most other people. <laughs> well, we know a couple bands that are just like. We go out three months and then one month off, then three months on, and then one month off. We just continually book shows till until we die it's like dude i don't know how i mean we used to be kind of like that yeah. literally we would come home and have two weeks and then be gone for two weeks and then come yeah. home for a week and then be gone for a month it was pretty brutal there for a minute yeah it's uh it's always like so exciting at first when you're like oh i'm a touring band now yeah, man. we're going everywhere oh i'm playing <laughs> Missouri, Ooh, <laughs> or I'm going to yeah, man. The mid 30s, man. That'll that that'll that'll kill you. That'll it'll kill it. <laughs> break you in half. Yeah, literally break you in half. That being said, we do have some tour dates coming up. Yeah, go for them. Okay, check these out. So, we will be touring throughout April. These are the shows we have confirmed and are able to announce so far. April 1st, April Fool's Day, we're playing Greeley, Colorado at the Moxie Theater. It's their 10-year anniversary show. We're excited to be a part of that. And that's not a joke. Not a joke. (laughs) Uh, April 6th, Rapid City, South Dakota at AB's. April 7th, Billings, Montana at Pub Station. Love that place. Excited to come back. Casper, Wyoming. Oil City Brewing, another cool spot to check out laramie wyoming at the roughed up duck we basically might as well just set up a cot for us there in laramie at the roughed up duck i think that's the only place to re- like we played another place called cowboys once in that area oh uh, yeah i'm glad to, glad glad we found the duck i'll just say that <laughs> <laughs> uh april 13th colorado springs 
Colorado at Vultures. That's a new small venue. We're so stoked to be able to finally get play that. Uh, and then in May, we're playing Grand Junction on Cinco de Mayo at the uh, Mesa Theater. And May 7th at our hometown in Denver, Colorado at HQ with our friends Citra and Musuji. So uh, we got some shit coming on. And then uh, throughout April, we'll be hitting sort of the West Coast area. So be on the lookout for those dates as well. Yeah, very stoked to be going out. Um, thankfully, smart, uh, tour smarter, not harder. That's right. Places we know, places we like, things we like to do. You know, I, we are playing the one club that I got attacked on stage, and <laughs> we it's consistently we keep going back like like dogs to puke. Just like I just can't stop. <laughs> I won't. I can't stop. So if you haven't seen that video, uh, do yourself a favor and look up our YouTube. I think it's on there. And it's I think it's called Nate Fight. <laughs> yeah, something like that. It's pretty Nate awesome. Fight. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so Sky White. Oh yeah, that's who. That's how our interview is with today. Sky White from Foxy Shazam. Uh, great little story about Foxy. Uh, the first time we met them was our first ever show, opening up for another band. Uh, it was this Guitar Center contest. Is that right? Yeah, I I had submitted Baby Whale for. This is like 2012. Yeah, this was like we were still. Well, we had moved to Denver at this point. Uh, there was like I went to Guitar Center to get some strings, picked up one of their little free flyers, and on the back it had like a website. You submit your band, and then Slash from Guns N' Roses would look at the name of your band, and check out your one song or whatever, and then you would open up for him. Yeah, so it was like Slash is doing a tour, and every city he's going to pick a local band who is the winner of contests in each city, and those those are going to be the openers for his shows, which was a pretty cool idea. And randomly, we just fucking won. I don't know how or why. Well, but we the did. thing that's hilarious is we submitted for it and then totally forgot. Yeah, it was like almost a year it later. Was, it was a long time. Ago. I honestly thought we were getting scammed. I'm like, <laughs> what is this? Uh, this is like an Afton thing, or what is this? For those that don't know what Afton is, Afton was like a local Denver thing where they screwed over. Yeah, look up, just Google Afton, A F T O N scam. And you know, a bunch of stuff will pop up. Right. It's basically a pay-to-play. Then they would roll the money and never give you anything and just kind of move on. Yeah. I think the guy that was running it moved to Texas. So yeah, be aware, did. Texas. Yeah. So, what so was I cool, thought it was a scam. Yeah, but it was not a scam. They, So they rented gear for us. Well, no, no. Even the first, like, we were supposed to play the Denver date, but the Denver date oh, got right. canceled. That's right. So we were like, oh, shit. So I guess we just get, like, the goodie bag thing, and that's it. They're like, no, 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 no. We're going to fly you to San Diego. That's right. And I was like, the fuck you are? <laughs> yeah. The fuck yeah. you are? So they rented a bunch of gear for us, like, rented a full drum set, and they, it was cool because they were like, what do you use, and we'll try to match everything you use because it's Guitar Center, so they have everything, right? Right. So yeah, we so, everything so they, they brought had all. They literally pulled it off the gu- guitar center floor. Yeah, pretty much. So they, yeah. they had all the like stickers of what it cost. Still, They're like, oh no, this is going back. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. like, oh shit. All right, cool. So they flew us out, put us up in a hotel, a, a pretty nice one, right down the street from the House of Blues, which is where we were playing. And they had all the gear ready for us. Uh, this was the first time we ever opened up for another band before, like a national band, and it was fucking Slash, which was wild. Uh, and Foxy Shazam was the main support act on tour with Slash. So it was us, Foxy, Slash. Uh, and it was a fucking crazy experience. We heard uh, some road stories. So we were able to make friends, and we made friends with Foxy uh, Shazam, and they were telling us some of the stories because this was day, like, six on this Slash run that they were doing. And they were telling us, like, don't be the local band that goes and opens up with Sweet Child of Mine. That's right. Because that there was a band that was that won this contest as well that opened up somewhere in California. They literally got like three notes in. And the, the sound guy turned off this, the, this PA entirely, turned off all the lights, and the crew just so kicked them the fuck out of the building. <laughs> they literally kicked them out and made them buy tickets to come back in to get their shit. If that's not Fucking like a cold wake, blooded man, dude. Woo. If that's not a wake up call, <laughs> like I, you know, thankfully we've been lucky enough to understand a lot of like the do's and don'ts of being an opening band. 
hand, you know, like don't go over your time, kind of stay in your lane, do your thing, be thankful for what you have. I mean, don't be a pushover, but like right, you shouldn't like, be going in there like, where's my hummus plate? Yeah. There's an ebb and flow. Yeah. Right? Ask for the things that you need, but don't overstep. Don't seem desperate, you know, but be thankful. It's be like, on time. Yeah. There's like a line you have to ride a little bit. Yeah, th- definitely. We knew all these things. Um the only thing that we really ask for ever is just, like, water and maybe a drink ticket. Yeah. But being older now, I don't think we even drink anymore. Now it's like, if you have a little bit it's of like extra cash for a payout or a buyout, yeah. we'll take that to go buy a sandwich later or something. Yeah. But, but for the most part, we were, like, stoked. Yeah. Stoked to play this. Yeah, and I had heard of Foxy before and heard a couple songs, but I was not fucking ready for what they pulled out, dude. That They are one of the best live bands I've ever seen in my life, dude. It was wild. Do yourself a favor, look up Foxy Sazam and just look at their live stuff. Yeah. Like, if you want to see a dude surfing a keyboard <laughs> yeah, while playing and slamming his foot into the keys, yeah. their l- l- singer eats cigarettes. You want to see a guy eat a whole pack of lit cigarettes? Yeah, it's like I was not ready. Like, we, we consider ourselves a premier live act we think our live energy is very unprecedented and and at a very high level we could not fucking touch this band live not even a not even close so annihilated us yeah it was great they were fucking great (laughs) the other funny part of that story is that so at the house of blues in san diego there is only three green rooms which you would think like oh there's three bands perfect no 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 that's not how Shit works when you're working with big acts or heritage acts or legacy acts is the right. term. Where they'll take they'll have one room set up for warming up. So they'll have a full PA system and like Practice slashes in there ripping solos like uh-huh. you know, like some whatever you rip. And <laughs> and the other room is their relax room. And then the third room, if the oh, touring act gets it would be Foxy, Foxy Shazam. Yeah, so we were like, is there a place we can just like set up and get ready? And everyone's like, ah, uh, not really. So they, they put us in the freight elevator. With all the dead cases. Yeah. A de- for the layman, a dead case is a case that you're not using. So you take the your amplifier out, amp of it. out of the case, and then that case is dead. So a bunch of just unused cases stacked up in this elevator, just kind of standing there drinking our drinks. And we were, it was kind of like, Early on, it felt like um, Spinal Tap. You know that scene where they get lost in the back? Not that we got lost, but we got trapped in the thing. Because someone, you could only call the elevator from the outside. And we were inside drinking our sixer of whatever the hell, paps or whatever. Like, oh, yeah, man, we made it. We're so (laughs) fucking cool. Look at how cool we are. You know, like. High fives yeah. and like ass slaps yeah, the whole time. It was a pack of Coors Light <laughs> and, and a couple bottles of water. And we're like, oh, good. All right, we should begin. We should get ready and start walking out. And then, Cuckoo. yeah, the <laughs> elevator started leaving. Yeah. But we're like, <laughs> oh, oh shit, no. <laughs> we get down there. There's a bunch of crew guys. They're like, uh, sorry guys, can we? Can you send us? Can you send us back up, please? They're like, oh shit, yeah. <laughs> Barely made it. Got on stage. Yeah, we we uh, anyway. Played- play the show the show was awesome foxy was awesome got to meet and hang out with those guys for a little bit got to keep in touch turns out we know a few of the same people uh from ohio where they're from so have been able to keep that relationship ever since and that's how we got to have sky white on the podcast yeah they were playing the bluebird theater in denver and we eric and i were just happened to be off tour so guy a call and rode on down there Hell yeah. Anyway, check it out. Thanks again, guys. We really appreciate you. Uh, We're going to only be doing the podcast probably once or twice a month, mostly because my brain is stupid and unable to, like, like when I'm doing something, I can't really focus on a bunch of other stuff. Yeah. Well, and also consistency is key. We want to make sure it's consistently out at certain times a month. So if we're doing every week, it's just not going to be advantageous. So a couple times a month. Right. Enjoy. Thanks again, guys. We'll check you out in a minute. Uh, what's up, everybody? We are here with Sky White, the keyboard god of Foxy Shazam, Wendigo. And Wendigo T. Wendigo T. Yeah. Owner of Wendigo T. Yeah. Okay. You got a story for us. Let me hear what you got. So 
I think this was back in like 2009, maybe somewhere in the 2009, 2010 era. Uh, we were on tour with a bunch of like metal core ish bands. I think it was Sky Eats Airplane and a good band, a good band. You guys are a good band, but that's a weird fit. And who else was on that? Man, who else was on that? There is Scary Kids, Scaring Kids was also on that tour, I think. Also another weird fit. Um, I think we were third, for like first opener of a three-band bill. There's a chance there was somebody else on that guy too, but <laughs> but it was like a weird long run, you know. Like like I'm sure you're used to being the weird band on the bill. Right. So it does happen. So we were in Pompano Beach. You ever played the Glass House? No, I've you know I've played Pompano Beach. There's another little small like divey club or something mm. in the area. Yeah. But the glass house is like the yeah. chef's kiss. Like, oh, yeah, it's very nice. So there's like a giant corner stage. It was like a good feeling room. And so Foxy sets, they're, it's mayhem. There's stuff getting thrown around all the time. Injuries happen. It just happens. You get bumped. You get hit. Like it, everyone just, you just roll with it. Everything's totally fine with it. And every single thing went totally great with this set. And then there's a single moment in the set where our our bassist at the time, Daisy, if he is going to do a thing where he throws his bass over me, there's just these like atonal hits. There's like 21 atonal hits. I don't know how to play bass. He doesn't know how to play keys. We just we were to, supposed to switch instruments. Right. And he has like a two beat period. If that is going to happen, it has to happen right there. And so what happens is he doesn't do it. And so after that, I jump back up, like about to throw my keyboard around or something. But in that exact moment, my head hits the metal plate on the back of his base. <gasps> and like, I'm sweaty and disgusting. And I'm like, oh, and just kind of like my head sinks down. I like reach up like, oh, geez, that sucked. And then go back to playing. And so... I, I think that's I think that's it. I'm just crushing it playing and then all of a sudden I see like a single drop of blood land on my keyboard and I'm like, oh so this is another bizarre thing to explain. I thought I had a nosebleed because there's parts of the set where I'm doing like eleven note arpeggios and I smash my nose into the keyboard and I've gotten nosebleeds on stage a whole lot doing that dumb thing. So I was like, oh, that thing's happening again. So I like reach up at my face and there's nothing there. <laughs> and all of a sudden there's like three more drops touch my board and like I'm playing. So the blood's getting smeared around everywhere. Oh no. And, and then all of a sudden I feel like sweat pouring down my face and I look into the crowd and people just look at me like, ah! and, oh, so, and so I then look down and blood pours straight up cups of blood pouring out of my head all over my board oh my it's God. i feel it covering my face and like at this point you this know this is like a slasher movie so Literally. yeah yeah my my face is totally covered in blood like i it's there's no way there is my entire face is not covered in blood and like facial hair freaking blood caked in it but at the time you were so sweaty did you just think it was like yeah, yeah. it was just water or yeah i thought it sweat. i thought it was sweat until the crowd started screaming and then i looked down and there's blood pulling all over my board and then so i get <laughs> so like you know i'm still playing and headbanging and there's like blood yeah, splattering blood ever splattering directly <laughs> into the crowd it's a bar I, show now so like there's blood splattering all over my board the floor around me I realize, you know how show clothes work. You only have yeah. a couple things of show clothes on the road. I had like this polyester, like silky, intricate design, looked like an old lady shirt. And it was like one of my two show shirts. So I'm like playing while I'm like seeing blood trickle down my chest and I'm trying to unbutton it and get the shirt off before I bleed all over it. Right. And so we get to the very end of the set and I'm just like screaming out into the crowd and everyone's just like, ah, looking at me <laughs> and like, like, it, so I know it's bad, but from my experience, like, you know, adrenaline, you can't really feel a lot of pain in that type of scenario. Right. So like, I was, 
the end of the set, it's, the, all of this is happening over like 20 seconds of these. It's like, Dan, 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 Dan. And, like, and there's some girl up front through, crying. Yeah, ah, yeah, yeah. please. please blood, stop. blood freckles all over the first like 30 people. <laughs> and and so I'm like, at the very last hit, I like grab Eric and I'm, I just look at him like, get my board off the stage because it's a three band build. My stuff right. needs to be off stage. And he looks at me and he's like, ha! Ah! <laughs> like what happened? And I just I run backstage. And get a towel or something. So, so I, the the way that stage works too, it's like the backstage. It's like a long open hallway and long big open area, and then like little bathrooms hidden. And like so, I'm walking through pretty much twenty five guys' green rooms to try and get somewhere to stop bleeding. Right. So I I make it through, and there's like like band dudes hitting on babes, and like babes look at me like. Ah! <laughs> totally ruining their their whole night, and like this could happen to you. <laughs> and like band, stay off drugs, kids. <laughs> like band band guys coming up, like oh my god, or like people look at at it like and like turn away, like they're gonna pass out or throw up. <laughs> oh, man. And like this is all the tough metal guys just like seeing me, and they're like oh, hor- hor- horrified at what's going on. Wait, I, before you keep going, I wanted to say how crazy it is that even though you knew you were bleeding, you're like. Got to save the shirt. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah the, but it's, it's show clothes. There's like, if you get blood all over your show clothes, it can't be that fancy thing again. Right. And, like, you know, all everything gets ruined on tour. Right. Everything. Oh, yeah. Literally everything in your life gets ruined. Your laptop's going to get stepped yep. on. Somebody's going to, like, like. If, you every, like that pair of shoes? They're going to have holes yeah, in yeah, it. One of them is going to be gone somehow. Yeah. Like, everything gets ruined. So if there's anything <laughs> you can ever allow to not get destroyed, especially, we were dirt poor at that time, too. Like, <laughs> literally finding a thrift store and being like, oh, i got to spend four more dollars on a show shirt. <laughs> like, like, like uh, up, I, guys, open up uh, open up the merch box because yeah, yeah. i got to buy this shirt. Uh, yeah. So pretty much – So backstage everyone's like screaming and shielding their eyes and babes are running out of there and i find a tiny little shitty uh like uh bathroom with like one little mirror in it and so i at this point have no idea what i look like i look at myself (laughs) in the mirror and like i'm laughing that all these people are freaking out seeing me and i'm just like smiling laughing there's blood pour on my whole face is blood Literally every <laughs> inch of my face is blood, cause like I was I was trying to wipe it off cause I thought it was right, sweat. So right. like there's blood all over my hands, my arms, oh, and my chest, man. and like so I'm in this in this tiny room. I'm just looking at myself like, this is a lot of blood. Maybe I need to be worried about this. And like I just I'm looking at myself like, what do I do? And all of a sudden, there's this. Have you even like seen where it's at, where the injury is at? No, no, well, I. Uh, you could feel. But yeah, you can't I reached see it. up, and like it wasn't like a big open flap. It was just a he- head injuries bleed a lot. Right. So yeah. like I knew, I knew exactly where it was. I, I at this point, like, I think I, I read, ran my hands under the sink and like put some on my head. And when you put blood in water, it goes everywhere yeah, even more. Yeah, it's even worse. And so, like, it looked worse, and I kind of got woozy for a second. And so I just, like, sat down on the toilet, like, okay, I have to figure out how to not die right now. And all of a sudden. <laughs> in the, this shitty little bathroom. Yeah, yeah. And, and so the security guy, the like, one of the big security dudes, this gigantic hulk of a man, like, maybe, maybe six foot six, six foot eight, like, Okay. Huge goatee, bald, looks like he's been doing security forever, just like, you know, the leather faced security right. guy you know and love. Right. Like he just comes around the corner and he's like, Don't worry, son. I've been in the war. Sit down. Somebody go get some super glue. And so Whoa, yeah, he just took charge, huh? Yeah. So literally he he just grabbed somebody's stage towels, some stage towels, wiped my head off. Just squeezed my head shut. Somebody pulled super glue out of one of their their like guitar rigs for, right. for fixing stuff. Right. And he just literally super glued my head shut right there. Just held the shut. Yeah, held it shut. And the whole time, he, he's just like, yeah, you shouldn't worry about it. this. Is totally fine. Like I've super glued 
Like, I, I've super glued bullet holes shut on people. My friend, he got shot in the guts in the war, and I carried him through the jungle for two days, and I saved his life. And, like, he's just telling me war oh stories and, like, all these just super gory, wild things. And I'm straight up about – I'm on the verge of passing out. And I'm, like, so <laughs> grateful for this giant man holding my head shut so the blood doesn't escape. Mm. And, like, so I have no idea how much time passes. No, no idea. It could be anything. Right. But, like, I know I've lost a lot of blood because I'm, mm. like, my legs are wiggly. And, like – Daisy, Daisy keeps coming in. He looks like he feels so bad for wounding me. And like at some point, he he brings he he brings a pint of ice cream. Like I brought I brought I'm you sorry. ice cream. And I was like, just leave me alone for a little bit. And like I I as soon as I, I was done bleeding, I just found a dark corner, like a stoop to sit on for like forty minutes. Just be like, okay, don't pass out. That was a lot of blood. Let people carry stuff for me for a little bit. Don't be around fans because I lost a lot of blood and I'm gonna probably pass out. And so that's Whoa. that's my my blood glass house what story. A great story. What happened? You know, like the the germaphobe in me was like, how did they even? Because you're middle of the of this set, right? No, so that's the very end of the set. No, no, I'm saying like oh, yeah. you're the middle band or something. You said third yeah, yeah, or yeah. four. Oh or yeah, they're per- I'm so sure there's blood. I'm like a full trail. They look like they on. just sacrificed a goat up yeah. here or something. Yeah. You know, like crazy. What happened? Like, I want to know who at the glass house is out there mop- like mopping up yeah, between. Mop- <laughs> that poor person. It's my first day. <laughs> <laughs> and you're in the back room literally yeah. dying. Yeah. And, like, it, I remember that whole tour. Like, you know the feeling when you got super glue stuck on you? Yeah. That's it's, It was like that on my head <laughs> for, like, the whole tour. And, like, you can't help but, like, kind of scratch a yeah, little bit. It gets and tight, too. And yeah. It's, like, a little irritating. It's very uncomfortable. But it held my head shut the whole tour. And I remember, like, tiny pieces of it falling out. And, like, when that last one, I, it, my, my, it was shut. I still got – you might be able to see it. I, I probably got yeah. a good – Like, was it here? It's probably – if you see something I, that I looks – I see kind of looks like a little indention, though. Just maybe, uh, slightly. That, that's probably just a hunk of my skull missing from that. I don't Jeez. Know. <laughs> so what part of the base actually hit you? Was it the – like? So there's a back plate that's metal. Okay. So, like, you know, if you hold up, so, like, the guts. Right. You know where the guts yeah. are if you if you have, like, a metal plate on the So, where all the knobs are, all that stuff on the front, the back end of it so you can work on it. Has a, had a big-ass metal plate. Oh, so, it's okay. just a metal plate. Metal plate just bonked right so on the top. So, you just literally slammed it on your head like a hammer straight well, down. Yeah, well, I was, I, I was supposed, it was supposed to happen two beats earlier. When it didn't, I jumped up. Into it. Into it. So he was expecting me to sit there, but I jumped up because it was a few beats later. So Okay. So like So it was just a miscommunication and the chaos that your show is. Yeah. Okay. So it's not like it was was not intentional or anything like that. No, no. (laughs) No. Well it's like chaos happens on stage, but it there's it after playing thousands of shows together, it's almost choreography. If something yeah. happens, then this. If if that then happens, then this can happen. Like, oh, if person jumps on back, jump, somebody will else do this thing. So right. it's like, there's like a flow chart of crazy shit that can happen on stage. And he was just two beats off. And since he was two beats off, I did a thing because I was assuming there was not going to be a bass thrown over my head. Right. So that's how the mistake happened. I love that part of tour where you're like three shows in and you're like, not that you're working out moves, but you're just kind of like figuring out the set in a more organic way than just like having it like we're just practicing it in our space. But no, the, now there's people here to see it. And you're like, I'm going to do this one thing. You don't say it out loud, but you just kind of like do it. And then by the end of this tour, which is 30 some shows later yeah. or, so, or a small tour or whatever, you're like, Every moment you has has a, something a special. Yeah, right. That's I, so cool. That feeling, knowing that like you're just kind of like more connected to the people you're playing with than ever. It, have you ever seen or been around like a coral reef with all the like little sea creatures kind of moving in the 
water and like little together. little fish come out and take a bite off something and like there's like it's just like this undulation this full ecosystem of yeah. tons of stuff happen that's a great way to describe it's this. the flow yeah it's like this complex flow right so but that's that's what i think of yeah but it's also well i guess it is it's like the flow is is because of the water movement which is the crowd and it's like you figure out if we play this song and do this, the f- the flow is going to push us this way, and this is what we do, yeah. and it's kind of like this beautiful little ecosystem, like yeah. you said. Yeah. Wow, did I just repeat your yeah. whole story? Yeah, you, you, you got it. <laughs> Give you my, my dude. Mic too. <laughs> so bad to just repeat. <laughs> like my wife will say something, and I go and repeat it, yeah. but in a different yeah. way. It's just yeah. like exactly what I said. Yeah. I'm a man. I can't help but do that. <laughs> yeah. It's like, what do you do? <laughs> so <laughs> stupid. Why? <laughs> Why can't we be? Why can't I be better? <laughs> well, you know, you can speak for all men. I, I think I most know, most like, men do that exact thing. Like, oh yeah, this thing you said is is truth. This thing that you said I am now saying is also truth. Yeah, I mean, there's, <laughs> in some way, I like try and justify it by saying like, if I repeat it, then when my words for some reason i get my words better. Well, well, well yeah you, I, I don't know is that stupid it, like, like it could I be st- it could be stupid but it also could be how your brain works it's like a speaking spell like yeah. for, but, I, <laughs> but i'm the speaking spell yeah, so i can understand yeah. like oh yeah he did say that but you're also interviewing me right now so saying something multiple times right. might actually be helpful no nah, i don't so. know these people don't like me so <laughs> it's probably best to just cut me out of yeah. this whole thing I, I, it's just my mic on on the end of this. <laughs> it. It's like, that's who's it. he talking to? Yeah, <laughs> it's just you talking to yourself. Yeah. Like, okay, that's cool. So, cut this together. Make me sound really cute if you can. Okay. Yeah, and, but but you can leave that in to let them know that you did that. Oh, I should mention by the way, we're outside of the venue. They're playing uh, the Bluebird Theater here in Denver tonight, Ooh. and we are sitting in my car as it's raining yeah and kind of steaming up the windows and kind of looking creepy at that yeah just some dudes in a steamy car no bit <laughs> no big deal man it's pretty weird yeah yeah well thank you yeah thanks brother Woo! do we cheers with the microphones i guess that felt right yeah i know <laughs> see ya bye there we go thank you guys once again for checking out our podcast and we'll be doing it uh twice a month not really able to go and keep up with it. It's just it's a lot harder, especially when you're doing it yourself. Like you you hear all these podcasts and how cool they are, and you're like, oh yeah, that's easy. Yeah. They got producers, editors, yeah. all sorts of. They just have shit. people. They they just talk, and, and then, then some dude the is room. yeah yeah. <laughs> Not us. We have to do this whole shit by ourselves. Yeah. So uh, plane crash. Our new single is out as we speak. Please check it out on Spotify. Check out the music video on YouTube and share it with someone, please. Actually, force someone to listen to the song. It's incredible how easy it is to support an independent artist, yet people can't move their fucking stupid hand to <laughs> like something or share it. Yeah. Now, I get that some people like to be incognito when they're on their <laughs> Facebook or whatever, but it's understandable. Yeah, for sure. the love of God, help someone, yeah. help so a kid out. This is what I want you guys to do, okay? When I say force, I mean force someone you know to listen to it. So next time you're, you know, with your friend going to dinner or going to a show or going to the bar or whatever, you hop in your car, your friend gets in the passenger seat, you fucking play that shit right off the, just play it. Just press play. Don't say anything. This is what we're listening to now. And when your friend's like, oh, what is that shit? This is awesome. Say, this is that fucking band in the well I've always been telling you about. And honestly, if they start talking through the track, drive your car off a bridge. That's right. Don't yeah. pause don't. it. Pause it. Say, shut the fuck up and listen to this. That's right. No, no compromise here. That's right. <laughs> Force your friends to listen to In the Well. That's all I have to say. Oh, man. We're good. We're so good. <laughs> anyway, guys, we'll see you next time. Thank you so much, guys. Bye. So, here, check out our new single, Plane Crash, right now.